Hello, CNS Tides faculty, and welcome to the Curriculum Design Institute. My name is Blaze Utz. I graduated from UT Austin back in spring of 2016 with a Bachelor's of Science in Physics. While at UT, I was in the UTeach program and certified to teach math, physical science, and engineering in grades 6 to 12. Currently, I teach engineering and physics at Stony Point High School in Round Rock, Texas. Today, I want to show you how to make interactive slide decks using Google Slides. We'll start with the basics. What is Google Slides? It is a presentation editor and presenter tool in the Google Suite, which all of you have with your UTexas email accounts. It has similar functionality to Microsoft PowerPoint, but with some important defining features. The editor is accessible via the internet. Simply open Google Drive and create a new Google Slides presentation. If you already have a PowerPoint you want to use, you can upload it to your Google Drive, open it as Google Slides, and edit from there. All changes you make to the presentation are automatically saved to your drive, which has a robust version control system so you can revert changes as needed. Once you make a Google Slides presentation, you can edit the sharing settings so anyone with a link can view, or anyone with a UTexas email can view. Simply copy the URL and send it to your students. Then anyone who can view the presentation can make a copy of it, which automatically saves to their Google Drive. Their personal copy can be edited to their heart's content without changing the original. Once they have finished editing the presentation, your students can share it with you, either by using Google Drive sharing settings, giving you a live link like you gave to them, or by downloading their presentation as a PowerPoint file, OpenDocs presentation file, or a PDF, and then uploading to Canvas or the LMS of your choice. Now, let's talk about how I use interactive slide decks. I will be showing you examples of presentations I made last semester for my Principles of Engineering class in collaboration with my student teacher, Jesse Stamper, who is also a UT Austin and UTeach alumnus. You will see in the linked presentations that I use something called Pear Deck to make the slide decks interactive. But because you don't have Pear Deck natively through UT, I've adapted the examples in this presentation and will instead show you how to do these things using Google Slides on its own. The first way that I use Google Slides as interactive slide decks is as primary exposure to content, or in other words, an alternative to the traditional lecture and note taking. This can either be done synchronously in your lecture time or asynchronously outside of your lecture time. The second way that I use slide decks is as formative assessment, like in-class activities and homework assignments. The real difference between them comes down to how much space in the slide deck is devoted to new information and how much is for student response to questions you pose. The first example I will show is from a notes slide deck over centroids. Here I had students watch clips of an instructional video. I made this video last year, but I broke it up into small chunks and embedded them in the slide deck using insert video and selecting the video from a Google Drive. If instead of your own video, you find that there is a YouTube video that will work, then it's the same process for that. Copy the URL for the YouTube video or search for it in the menu. In this example from Force Factors Notes, students would listen to audio clips. I recorded these clips using Audacity, saved them to my Google Drive, and then embedded them using Insert Audio and selecting the clip from my drive. I also put the text version of exactly what I said in the audio clip in the Speaker Notes section of the slide. Here's part of a slide deck where I included slides of traditional presentation content, text on slides, and some visual aids. If I have lots of video or audio in a slide deck, I try to limit the text on the slide to the bare essentials of the content and emphasize visuals. Slide decks are dense with text that aren't great for presenting or learning, so avoid that as much as you can. In this example from the Centroids notes, I included slides for students to respond to a question. Here I asked them some multiple choice questions, but consider alternative methods of response. You can ask students to do things like text or numerical based response, like this example from the probability notes. You can ask students for drawing, like in the force vector notes here. These can use things like text boxes, shapes, lines, or freeform drawing. Students who don't have a tablet input for their computer could use a phone as a touch screen for drawing. You can also ask students for audio or video using the same embed tools as you used. Students' phones are fully capable of recording audio or video and could even use computer apps like Audacity or Screencastify free. Just make sure students have fixed the links to any files uploaded to their Google Drive. This example is a lab I adapted from previous years. Normally, I would have students conduct this lab as a class where we observe and predict the deflection of a wooden beam when students stand on it. This year, in the virtual learning setting, I videotaped myself and a few other teachers conducting the experiment ourselves, and then had students perform calculations and verify answers in the assignment. I also included some practice problems at the end. Those of you who like doing demos in your lectures might consider a format like this. I hope this video and presentation have inspired you to try out making an interactive slide deck in your courses. I will be available in the Q&A later today to answer any of your lingering questions and give you even more tips and tricks for making awesome interactive slide decks. Thank you very much, Nucka Borns.